Let's think about the Fourier transform of discrete time signals. And the point I want to make is that those Fourier transforms are not discrete. It's tempting to think that if you have a discrete time signal, you would have a discrete time or a discrete Fourier transform. But that's, that's not, the, not the case. It's a common mistake, it's not the case. I just want to explore why that is. Well, let's consider a signal, continuous time signal, and let's maybe just consider a sine wave. And we're going to sample that sine wave. We might sample it at particular times. And we sample that sine wave by multiplying by delta functions. And from that, we can create a discrete time signal. And that's by taking the heights of those delta functions and taking them one after the other as and plotting them as a discrete time signal with the integers. So in this case, it's zero, and then there's this height, and this height, I'm just following these uh, values here from the sample that I've drawn. Now, this is a discrete time signal. It's sampled, in this case, from this sine wave. This sine wave exists at a particular frequency. Now, there's nothing to say that that frequency of that sine wave is related to the sampling rate. I could have picked any sampling rate with any sinusoidal waveform. So this waveform here could be anything. And that's, I think, the first clue to be saying that the Fourier transform of a discrete time signal is not discrete. Because the signal that I've sampled, in this case a sine wave, could be any value. So when I think about the Fourier transform, this Fourier transform in this particular case, there's only one sinusoidal component. It is a delta function because there's only one sinusoidal component in the one that I've drawn, but this value could be anywhere. This is omega naught. It's the frequency of the sinusoid that I've drawn. It's not related to the sampling rate that I've chosen. So therefore, this is not discrete. Although this has only got one component, this could be anywhere. So more generally, if we had a waveform, a speech waveform, for example, this speech waveform can be digitized and discretized in exactly the same way that we did for the single sine wave. But this speech waveform has all different frequency components in it. For example, it might be that this has a Fourier transform that is a band limited or a low pass. It might be this shape, for example, and this might be my, my voice, and it might be between, let's say, uh, all the frequencies below 2 kilohertz, for example. So this might be the Fourier transform of that waveform, and what we've done is digitized it, but all of those frequency components went into this signal and were captured in this digital version. So because all of those frequencies are in there, they're all going to be contained in the digitized version. As we said, there's nothing that says that we've digitized the frequencies. We've digitized the samples in time, but the frequencies are all existing still in the signal. We've sampled them in time. So we'll still have a continuous, all those frequencies are still there, so we'll still have a continuous in the frequency domain, a continuous function. The only difference in discrete time case for the discrete time signal, once we've discretized it, that as we know the basis functions repeat and so therefore this function will be repeating at 2 pi, minus 2 pi, 4 pi uh, and so on. But the actual frequency components are there. They're in this signal. We've sampled it in time but it's from a signal with all of those frequency components there and they've all gone into contributing where the heights of these samples are. So there's nothing that's been discretized in the frequency domain so the Fourier transform is not discrete.